From that time, Yeshua began to show to his taught ones that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and to suffer much from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and to be raised again the third day. And Kepha took him aside and began to rebuke him. That was his first mistake. Okay. You don't rebuke your teacher. Saying, be kind to yourself, master. This shall not be to you. But he turned and he said to Kepha, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for your thoughts are not those of Elohim, but those of men. Then Yeshua said to his taught ones, if anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his stake and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life shall lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man, what is it a man profited if he gains all the world and loses his own life? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his life? For the son of man, the son, excuse me, the son of Adam is going to come in his esteem, in the, excuse me, in the esteem of his father and with his messengers, and then he shall reward each according to his works. Okay, let's break this down. First of all, we're going to say something you probably have never heard before. We're going to start translating things more correctly. And we're going to see this a lot in chapter 8 of Romans. Okay, so well, let's see. It says here that he told them this is going to happen. And then Kepha said, oh, no, no. Don't say this terrible stuff is going to happen to you. And then he gets rebuked by Yeshua. And he says, get behind me, Satan. So did he just call Kepha Satan? Yes and no. No, not yes and no, no. See, you were taught yes and no. All right? What he says was this. Satan means adversary. So he's saying here, get behind me. You are now, Kepha, acting in an adversarial way. Not all of a sudden that Satan possessed Peter or Kepha. His, listen, his thought was that of what? Those of men. See, the mind of flesh or human thought versus the mind of Yah or spiritual thought. So Peter was not possessed. He did not give in to the guidance or wiles of the devil. He simply was thinking from his flesh. Different than what you've ever heard. Listen now. Watch what it says. Now I'm going to read it in a different way of translating it. But he turned and said to Kepha, get behind me. You're being an adversary. Don't be my adversary. You are a stumbling block to me if, that, if what you're saying is trying to happen because your thoughts are not those of Elohim, but those of men, not those of Satan. Your thoughts are those of men. You're thinking like a human being, like a man. You're not thinking like Elohim. This is a big part of where we're going now is to understand the mind of the flesh or the mind of man versus the mind of Elohim or spirit. And we're going to start to see that all play out when we switch from here to Romans 8. But understand, we have been taught over and over again from a Christianese point of view that everything is very ooey-gooey, ethereal spirit. And so basically, for that moment, Peter was possessed by the devil or was yielding to the desires of the devil. Nonsense. He was thinking like a man. He personally didn't want to see that happen to Yeshua. He was thinking from his flesh. Just like he did when he chopped the guy's ear off. By the way, he wasn't aiming for his ear. Okay? But that's the point. He was thinking from his mind, his heart, his thoughts from the flesh, not the mind and the heart and the thoughts of above, from above. Yeshua gave them a concept from above. They're going to take me and kill me, but I'm going to be raised the third day. And Peter's like, I can't process that. That means you're going to die. All he heard was you're going to die part. He says, they're going to take me and kill me. That's what he heard. And he's like, no, that can't be. And he says, if that can't be, then that's a stumbling block to everything I'm trying to do. It's part of why I came here is that that was going to happen. So now you're acting in an adversarial role. So when you have a mindset of not accepting what comes from above because of your change, the way you see it in your heart, the way you see it differently or the way you would rather it be, now you're in an adversarial role in your thinking, in your mindset. Am I making sense now? Okay, that's not what you were taught in Sunday school or in Sunday church or even in Messianic congregations. Remember, I never taught it that way till today. 
The word gets translated in English as Satan. By the way, that's also what you call the, uh, the attorney that's prosecuting you in Israel in court. <laughs> okay? They're the, they're the accuser, the adversary. Now, in this case, he's not accusing. He's rebuking Yeshua, and he's being an adversary. So let's understand that this had to do with what? A thought process, a mindset of human thought, fleshly thought, the thoughts of men. He says, for these, now that's again, the context, if we just let it play out, you see. He says, get behind me, adversary. You're a stumbling block to me because your thoughts, if your thoughts are going to be fleshly, you're going to be a problem for me, is what he's saying. If your thoughts are going to be the thoughts of the men, the thoughts of human beings, the way that men think, that's going to cause stumbling if you're going to be one of my students teaching people. Is this making sense? If you're going to think like a man and not like an Elohim, if you're going to have your own thoughts and your own ways, this is not going to be in line with what I'm doing. You're now a stumbling block. That's what he's saying. Because now look what he says now. In order now we'll understand the rest of it even more clearly. He says, look, because if you want to come after me, verse 24, you got to do what? Deny Satan? What's he say? Deny self. Because self was the problem. Kepha didn't want this to happen. And so he talked to Yeshua, said, no, 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 this can't happen. Because he personally didn't want it to happen. <laughs> 